Uh, we just finished our adoration. Nanette and I just have an, our adoration and we will uh, we are going to come inside the church proper of St. Anthony St. Anthony de Padua because uh, yeah, we'll talk about relics uh, we have here in St. Anthony de Padua uh, a relic of the saint St. Anthony so we're going to uh, genuflect in front of the tabernacle to show our reverence of uh, our Lord okay this is this is Saint Anthony Ned. and then that is the relic this one here that's a relic so the, the relics are of three classes the three classes uh, uh, so first what are relics relics are parts of the bodies of the saints uh, it may be a bone or a skin or um, hair but it's a part of the body of the saint himself and uh, you call that you call that uh, first class relic so usually what is found in like in churches are first class relics of saints and these uh, relics have um, doc like uh, authenticity carries with it document of authenticity so for this it may be in the office or somewhere um, stored so this is first class relic uh, part of the bodies of the saint and uh, second class relics the second class relics are any object associated associated with the saint like his clothing that he used before he was alive for example his sandals his whatever is associated with him that is second class relic and third class relic is uh, is an object that has touched the first class or the second class relic so anything that you touch on his bone for example a cloth um, you call that third class relic so, now the, these, these relics have uh, miraculous, miraculous powers. It can, it can cure illnesses. It can drive out spirits through, through the grace, the graces of God that uh, were endowed in those relics. So there are. What are the biblical, biblical basis, biblical basis of the graces endowed in a relic okay we have four we have four uh incidents in the in the bible where uh, god works through the relics uh, first we have the in the old testament there is there is uh, in the second in the second book of Kings, chapter thirteen, uh, we have we have uh, Elisha, the prophet. Elisha has died, um, and then his he his he was buried. Right now. And then during that time, uh, there there were raiders, uh, Moabite Moabite raiders. And they apparently the people are afraid of these raiders. Then there was there was a time that the the people there were burying 
were burying um, somebody who died. And then when they knew that they, sp they have spied on uh, the coming raiders, so they were, they were afraid, so they like so-called threw the body of the ones that they, bear that they were supposed to bury into the tomb of Elisha. Now, when this dead man, uh, when this dead man uh, touched the bones of Elisha, he came alive. <laughs> he stood, he stood and came alive because, because he he was thrown into the tomb of Elisha and touched his his uh, his bones. So that's one. Uh, that's in the second book of Kings. And then there is also, I'm sure we're familiar with the, we're familiar with the woman who just touched the cloth of Christ, right? He, she said, she said that if I could only touch his cloak, uh, I would be healed of his uh, bleeding. He was, she was hemorrhaging for, for 12 years, and then by touching the cloth of Christ, she just immediately, uh, her hemorrhage immediately stopped. So that's an example of, and then our Lord said, your faith has healed you. So that's another, that's a second example. Another example uh, which could serve as a biblical basis of relics is that um, Paul, St. Paul was, evangelizing like he was he was all over uh, he was busy so people the, the early faithful during his time could could not bring the their sick to him because he would be far away mm -hmm. so what they do is they they bring uh, handkerchiefs uh, aprons that were touched by St. Paul. And they would bring those handkerchiefs, aprons to the sick and touch the sick with those handkerchiefs. And uh, the sick would be healed and evil spirits would e even come out. So you can find that story in the Acts of the Apostles that uh, the healing power of uh, handkerchiefs and uh, aprons and then also there was an there was an incident regarding the shadow of peter so there were already many there were multitudes of believers already at that time so they you know they could hardly get hold of peter so what what they did was they they knew that peter was coming they knew that peter was coming so they would line up their sick people on their mats and cots line up along the road so that even with a shadow of Peter they would be healed mm -hmm. and that was really what happened uh, people were, were being healed just because of the shadow of Peter so so God works through physical things as uh, as as seen by those uh, four examples that we have, so that's why if you if you are praying for healing, you can you can f follow how how God works through uh, through the physical objects like this one this is uh, first re first class relic of saint anthony uh, you can ask the intercession of saint anthony for for you to help um, pray for healing and you can touch you can touch that uh, first class relic whatever whatever um, ailments you have so it's not the people would be accusing us of superstition, 
but uh, it's not superstition as long as you properly understood that uh, you're just using the relics so that God can work through those objects to heal you as uh, he has shown in the uh, he has shown in those biblical stories that we have and then um, there's also there's also another there's also another story uh, in the Bible also in the second book of Kings that there was this um, there was this soldier commander in the army uh, called Naaman and he was afflicted with he was afflicted with uh, leprosy mm -hmm. uh, yeah he was afflicted leprosy and he was um, um, seeking for cure and then he, well, he eventually was uh, sent to Elisha at that time he, the prophet Elisha was still was still alive the same Elisha where the bones of the dead dead person was came to life so Elisha he he went to Elisha and he was at the in front of the house of Elisha but then Elisha did not even did not even come out Elisha just sent a messenger to tell Naaman that uh, he should bathe in the river Jordan dip himself in the river Jordan seven times and uh, seven times for him to for him to get healed so this Naaman was upset he he went home enraged because uh, according to him why would why would he have he had to go to the river Jordan to to bathe and get cure why not in the river um, it was far far it's a river called far far in the rivers of Damascus which apparently is clearer than the river Jordan so he did not he did not uh, agree that he has to go there it's just it's, a, it's the same the rivers here in Damascus in the, like what he said is more even more clear so he went home and but then his slave his slave said uh, like master why if the prophet has told you to do great things I'm sure you would do it because they're great things and he was supposed to be a, a great soldier but why can't you not do the simple things that the prophet said you know, like go to the river Jordan and dip yourself seven times so because of of the prodding of the slave uh, Naaman went and followed and followed uh, the command of uh, Elisha and true enough he was healed mm -hmm. he was healed his his uh, skin became clearer and uh, as uh, it was as young as his skin was looked young so this this story tells us that God wants God has his own way of he has his own way so we are I think we are being tested by how humble we are by following his way not insist on not insist on uh, having our way so if God showed us in the Bible that we can we can get healing through this the objects that were associated with the holy persons then why not why not follow like, we can we can we can pray uh, for God's healing God can still do that but it takes humility to use this um, to use these objects
to ask for example to ask for example saint anthony to help us with some ailments especially grave ailments so that's why we have this really we have this relics and here in Winnipeg, uh, we have relics in St. Andrew Bobola. The, we have the relic of St. John, St. Pope John Paul II. And then we have relic of St. Faustina. St. Andrew also. I don't know, I don't know about if we have relic of St. Andrew Bobola. And I have here an example of the relic. Oh, wait, wait, is that my voice? A relic of Saint, a brother, Saint Brother Andre. Is that the one? No, oh, that's not the one. Oh, oh this is not the one. Is that the rosary? Okay, this one I I was able to secure this rosary with a relic of Saint Brother Andre. That mm -hmm. one there. That is a relic of Saint Brother Andre. This is a, this is a third class relic. This is just a cloth that was touched on a first class or a second class relic. So this is the rosary. From Montreal. Let's see, Father Andrew. Saint here in Canada. And then we have uh, another relic, a third class relic, a sample of Blessed Basil. So you can secure this relic of Blessed Basil in St. Joseph. Saint Joseph. Church, Ukrainian Catholic Church down there at uh, Jefferson, 250 Jefferson. We have, I think, a cloth. Cloth here inside. Can you open it, please? It's a cloth that has touched, uh, touched the, I think, the body of Blessed Vasil. Um, Blessed Vasil is inside the church. His incorrupt, his incorrupt body. The energy, you know, huh? it's empty. It was, uh, mm. There, ah, there's a clone. Mm. Okay, so, so we're done. Mm -hmm. So, those are the my readings on the relics. It's, it's not, a, it's not a superstition, but it can slide to superstition if you do not understand, if you believe that the relic itself has a power in itself. No, it does not have a, does not have a power in itself. We're going now to to Brother Luloy to visit him. He has a successful surgery of his aneurysm. So that is our adoration, that's our Lord.